Hi guys, Peter Finch here, and today's video is all about wrist position during the backswing and exactly where it should be in relation to the arms. Because it's certainly something you see with different tour players and lots of different players who come in here for lessons. Their wrist positions during the backswing can dictate what is happening to the club face and its orientation to the target during the swing as well. The actual setting and the position of the wrist during the backswing is very important and is certainly something you should have a look at in your game. Now, first of all, we'll have a look at bowing of the wrist. Now, bowing of the wrist during the backswing is as you take it away, rather than staying parallel to the back of the left arm, nice and in line here, is when the left wrist starts to bend this way. It's a position when you get to the top, very Dustin Johnson-esque, back of the left wrist facing at the sky, and the club face here you can also see is pointing upwards towards the sky. Now this is classically a closed club face position. What you tend to see is when people get to that position at the top of their swing, the club face in relation to target is closed assuming they're aiming straight at the target. So it's close to target and it's very hard to then keep that club face square and pointing to target during the downswing. The ball will generally go off to the left hand side. The reverse of that is a cupped wrist. So actually taking the club away and that wrist bending the other way. So actually increasing the angle in between the left forearm here and the actual back of the wrists. And then at the top of the swing, come into this position and you can see that the club is in the opposite direction from the sky, it is now into an open position. Now you can have lots of different variants of this, and that cupped position will then create an open club face to target in the swing, assuming that you are aiming at the target. Now, I am not saying that if you bow the wrist, you're gonna hit it left. And I'm not saying that if you cup the wrist, you're gonna hit it off to the right hand side. You can make compensations within the downswing to create a straight shot. There are countless examples of this across the tour professional world. If you have a look at a Dustin Johnson, for example, he is the stereotypical bowing of the left wrist, but still absolutely munching the nuts off it. So it can be done. But what I will say is when you bow a wrist or when you cup a wrist during the backswing, like I said, you then have to make compensations. It is a lot easier not to have to make compensations during the downswing. It is a lot easier to have the club face in a relatively neutral position during the backswing. So as you move down into the shot, you can hit the ball straighter. Now to get the wrist and to get the club face lined up, there are a few kind of key checkpoints that you can really use and that you can go through and a few drills that you can go through as well. Now, grip is very important to actually where the wrist will set. So what I'll do is I'll throw up a link in the description below about a grip video I've done previously about how to get a neutral golf grip. Now again, there are advantages to a strong or a, a weaker grip for some players, but the video is very much for a neutral grip. Now, after you've actually got the neutral grip and once you've got that settled down, the key checkpoints you really wanna be looking for is as you take the club away, at this halfway stage, if you were to look at your backswing from this kind of down the line angle here, you want the club pretty much pointing straight back. The club face, you want it pretty much towards the sky or just slightly inclined off to the left hand side like this. If it starts to go in this direction, it's gonna be open. And if it starts to go in this direction, it's gonna be closed. But just notice what happens, especially in this closed position, what's happening to my wrist it's already getting into that bowed position there. So at this point here, you want the club head pretty much in front of the hands and the toe pointing up towards the sky. If it's on a slight incline, that's not the worst thing in the world. Now from here, as the wrists begin to set, you wanna see the back of the left wrist and the back of the left hand lining up and matching the back of the left forearm. I've got my watch on here so I can see it is nicely lined up to the actual watch face. You can see the shaft is on a slight kind of tilt here, which is all about kind of swing play. Now, as you get to the top of the swing, you simply want to maintain this relationship between the left arm, the left wrist, and the club face there. You can see how they're all in a nice parallel alignment here. And all I need to do to do that is after I'm in this position, turn my shoulders. And at the top of the swing, they're maintaining their alignment 
to each other. And what I like to get people to do if they are struggling with getting their wrist set into a certain position is very simply do that preset drill with them. So I get them set up, taking the club away, getting into a position where the left wrist, the watch face and the club face are all lined up. It's good to use a mirror if you have access to this behind you. Then turn the shoulders back and actually come through and hit the ball. It's a very simple one to do, but it certainly gets the, uh, gets the point across. It certainly gets it embedded nice and quickly. So take it away, get the preset, turn and hit. It's a nice strike considering it's my third shot of the day. A little bit overdrawy, but not too bad. I start playing like that. <laughs> so guys, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully that explains some of the differences between the different wrist positions as you take the club away and exactly what that will do to your club face in relation to your targets throughout the swing and why you don't generally want to be making that many compensations during the downswing. Right guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on my other social media platforms as well and subscribe to the Quest Golf channel as well. Some videos are gonna be coming up there, joint channel between myself and Rick Shields. Right guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.